This is John Paul Wright. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. And if you're a fan of Johnny Depp, which I assume a lot of you guys are, you might be interested in this right here. Now, I've said a few times, I wasn't a huge fan of Johnny, just a general moviegoer fan. You know, I liked his work, but I never thought about his personal life. And when I found out he was a Beatles fan, he liked classic rock and things like that, I became more of a fan, enough of a fan to look into some of these interviews and things like that. So what we got here is not originally English. I don't know what language it was, but it's been translated. However, the translations look pretty good. So this is from Twitter, and there are six parts here. I'm gonna read three, and you guys will have the original account if you wanna check out the other three. So let's take a look at what we got about this interview. So here's the tweet that the real Laura B retweeted, which is how I saw it, and it says, when in Deauville, Johnny spoke to Premier Classics Magazine about his career, we translated the loveliest parts, enjoy. Sorry I'm not saying that name right there of that town. I don't know what language it was at first, but it's not super important. So here's the first one. It started when I was about 10 or 12. My brother is older than me. At home we had an old record player on which I was playing some tasteless pop vinyls. One day my brother threw away my disc. He went to look for one of his albums and he put Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. It changed my life. It was a revelation. The rhythm, the lyric, it was crazy. I understood especially that there was life outside of what the radios broadcast. On the sidelines, we find the truth. The real sound, the real life. My brother gave me two older discs on the heels of Last Tango in Paris and a Clockwork Orange soundtrack. So I think some things there kind of imply as to where Johnny's life might be going now, where you could find great things made by independent people and not always follow the Hollywood mainstream crowd for the best things. I watched Jerry Lewis, Faye Donaway, Marlon Brando, and Al Pacino like an eagle looks at his prey. I absorbed the most possible from their teachings. Fundamentally, it solidified what I already knew, what music taught me, do what you think is right. You can be actor, musician, painter, writer. It is always the same thing. There is necessarily a form of compromise in your art. But don't ever compromise if you don't think it's for your own good. And hang on, don't let anyone stepping on your toes. I guess they meant don't let anyone step on your toes. But as you can see, pretty good translation. After 10 pages, I can tell if a project is worth it. I immediately start to imagine things in mind and I start to take notes. Only when I understand that everything can work, I accept the role. I look for something different. I want to be surprised. I want something that is not a formula, which is not standard. Each time I accept a role, I try to create something personal. And every time I start from scratch, I knew deep inside me that I couldn't do Thelma and Louise, Point Break, interview with the vampire as studios expected. I have never wanted to be a product, never. I've always approached this profession in a punk rock way. Yes, I've wanted to be a punk rock actor. So, pretty interesting stuff. And like I said, translation is not perfect, but not bad at all. So obviously, what Johnny said about music, I can relate to pretty much all the way. I think what happened was his brother took his record of the mainstream crap and just threw it away and he put on Van Morrison. I'm not the biggest Van Morrison fan, but I'll trust at the time he was doing different things than the mainstream and Johnny liked that. Then eventually Johnny found the Beatles and John Lennon and the other rock that had to do with that and also probably some psychedelics that went along with it. And he really got the message about thinking out of the box and not following the mainstream and what everyone else is doing and thinking is good. And you could see how that translates into the acting where he takes a character, he doesn't just play it like the studio thinks he should, he puts his own twist on it. But hey, that's just my silly little opinion. You guys, of course, let me know what you think down below. Once in a while, I do these fun little videos. I've been following Depp vs. Herd for a long time, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, once in a while, just want to hear about Johnny and the plus sides and what he's thinking and not all about the drama and the court and stuff like that. All right, let me say a few words about the channel. Here it is. First off, shout out to Carla Ellis, Cindy Bryden, and Lotus Flower. Also, got a GoFundMe and a PayPal if you'd like to donate to the channel. Links are below. Already got $500 in donations. 
Very, very thankful. I will get a thank you video out as soon as the money gets spent trying to get a new PC just to up the quality of the channel. Not the most important thing in the world, but it does help get the word out we think is right. If you're not subscribed here, consider it. If you consider it and you don't subscribe, well, I guess it'll be sad, but I'll get over it. See you next time.